Hi all, it's uh, Palis Blue here, but you guys can call me Harry. And today I want to do a bit of a commentary on cover. Um, it might seem like a bit of a basic topic to do, but certainly when I was a very new player to this game, and even kind of a mildly experienced player, I, I didn't ever really appreciate the importance of cover, you know, what it is, the best ways to take it, when to take it, you know. Uh, and, and today I'm going to address all these sort of questions, important questions and basic questions about cover. Um, to help you improve if you're not using cover to the best of your ability at the moment. So the first question I want to ask is, you know, what exactly is cover? It might seem a very basic question, but really I would categorize different pieces of cover into to two areas. There's visual, visual cover such as smoke or dark corners where they just can't see you, that's why they can't hit you. But then there's also um, physical cover, you know, where your body is hidden behind or in front of. Um, just the other side of a wall or something something physical. There's something physical between you and the opponent, hopefully obscuring most of your body. Um, the next question I want to address is why is it good to take cover? I mean, this might seem, again, a very basic question. It's one that needs to be answered all the same. I certainly didn't appreciate why it's good to take good cover when I started off playing this game. So um, why is it good to take cover? Well, <laughs> if you think about it, if you're behind, you know, if everything but your head is poking out, you know, behind a big wall or something, you'll see this happen soon with me. Um, you know, I, I'm going to take good cover around here, behind this big block on the right, and there's not going to be much of my body sticking out, and I win quite a few long-range gunfights here. Not not necessarily that one, that was pretty better aim, but down there, there's a guy all the way down there, and, you know, he's, he's not really looking at me anyway, but he wouldn't have a very good chance picking me off, because I'm behind this big, solid block. That's why it's good to take cover, because they don't, they don't have much of your body to hit, and you... They're not taking cover. They have almost you have almost all of their body to hit. Um, that guy, see, he took cover there, but he was a bit slow coming up. He kind of got into a battle that I had already prepared myself for. So, I mean, <laughs> if anything, that proves that cover isn't everything. But it is going to, you know, it's won me a lot of gunfights, and it certainly makes you confident in a lot of gunfights. Um, so, when the next question is, when should you take cover? Um, this differs depending on the type of gun you're using. I mean, with submachine guns, you've got fast movement speed. Um, submachine guns have what's called 100% movement speed. Assault rifles have 95%. And while it might only seem a 5% difference, it is noticeable. Um, and it is enough that it means that, you know, for submachine guns you can out engage people in the open and have a good chance of winning a battle because you'll be able to move quickly, you'll be able to evade their bullets. With assault rifles you have 95% movement as I said, so you've got slight slow movement, you're not going to be able to evade their bullets as well. They're, you know, people using submachine guns are always going to have the advantage against you when you're both fighting out in the open at kind of short to medium range. Um, so for assault rifles then you want to be using cover a lot more. For assault for submachine guns, you know, still use it when you can. There's nothing nothing that beats really being behind a big block of bricks or something with only your head popping out. You know, it's very hard to lose a gunfight in that situation. So even if you've got a submachine gun, try to get in that situation, but if not, it, it's better it's better to be out in the open with a submachine gun than with an assault rifle. Um, next question I want to address is what sort of cover you should take. You want to be taking thick cover. I mean, in COD 4 it's not as noticeable, um, but in Modern Warfare 2 it's very easy to penetrate cover because a lot of people have, you know, the full metal jacket attachment on their assault rifles. A lot of people use assault rifles. So they're very good at piercing cover, piercing walls. Um, plus, you know, that game seems to have better hit detection or certainly bigger hitboxes. I'm not sure that's, that's a fact, but it seems to. Uh, bigger hitboxes than COD 4. So um, that, that in Modern Warfare 2 you need to take very good cover. You need to be taking cover behind things you can't really shoot through. You know, if you can get behind a hill and you can just have your head popping out from behind a hill, that's ideal. Because you can't really penetrate. You, you can't penetrate natural features in any of these games, especially the comical banana leaves on uh, Favela. That's a, that's a bit of a joke that one. Good one, Infinity Ward. Um, so that's that's the sort of cover you should be taking, thick cover, big cover, but any cover is better than none and often, you know, even if you're just behind a thin wall, you, the enemy's still going to try to aim for your head and you're going to have the whole of their boys aim at and, you know, you're going to do the better job. And what should you do if there is no cover? Well, try to strafe that shift left and right, but ideally you should do what I just did in that kill back there, you know, I knew a guy was coming so I sat down in the corner and just tried to get the advantage, tried to get the jump on the guy. But that's the end of the game, a quick game, quick talk on cover, thanks a lot for watching. And I'll see you guys later.